didn't really matter at all in the first place. You've already given your reputation a digital homicide. G. Fucking. G. You fucking cut. Today's dingbats are digital homicide. Again. And they caused a. Company controversy. So about a year ago, well, actually exactly a year ago, I put out the original Controversy episode on these two dorks. In that video, I covered most of the shit they had pulled up to that point, and... Well, I had assumed they wouldn't be of any importance afterwards. And with that, the story has finally concluded. Finally concluded. Finally concluded. Finally concluded. Boy, was I mistaken. Usually I try not to do a part 2 to any singular controversies I've already done, maybe an occasional addendum here and there to clear up mistakes, or tackle anything additional that can be condensed into a shorter length, but these guys have been quite active since the original episode. In more ways than one. I highly recommend you watch the first part if you have it so you can get an idea as to who these guys are. Though, since it's my most popular video behind the Casey Manager ones, I'm 85% sure you already have seen it. So it's time once again to indulge in the insanity of the Arizona-based Brothers in Crime, Digital Homicide. We last left off with their shit, about shit game, Asholes, which was a poor man's argo.io, I think I pronounced that right, probably not. And with their dead reputation becoming more dead by the minute, things were looking grim for the company. But as much as I'd like to say things just got infinitely worse right off the bat, there was a tiny glimmer of hope, as weird as that is to say. In late January, Digihom had released their next big game, Dungeons of Cragmore, another first-person fantasy RPG akin to Deadly Prophets, but this time with a focus on online multiplayer. And, well, looking at the footage, it's still kind of crabby, but compared to the clusterfucks they shed out previously, it was surprisingly tolerable. Interestingly enough, Deadly Prophets was actually their most tolerable game before D.O.K. came out. So maybe this was something they could work with in the future. It still wasn't good, but like I said, this was a slight glimmer, and maybe a sign that Digihom were changing for the better. And then less than two months later, they fucked that possibility off to the edge of the universe. Going to the middle of March, Digihom seemed to have hit its reset button, lost any goodwill it gained in the previous months, and shat out 18 goddamn fucking games on the Steam motherfucking Greenlight! Many of these games were ones they had already tried to get on back in 2015, including Grimace's Journey, Bombing Run, Assault on Orion 7, and even Six Nights at Suzy's, which I think they've tried to get greenlit more than any of the other games. There were new ones, though. But from these new ones, we learn just how little they've learned and how much of a fuck they don't give. So there's this game called Wyatt Derp. It's a shitty western themed stationary shoot 'em up. And then, because they love that concept so much, or maybe it was just really easy to make, they also put out a sequel, Wyatt Derp 2 Peacemaker. They put up a sequel to a game that they haven't even released yet. And you want to know how they differentiate the sequel from the original? By changing the camera angle! Well done. Super. Excellent. Just, just amazing. Great work. F fantastic work. <sighs> Kill me. Of course, during this whole shebang bang, games critic Jim Sterling was there to cover it all. Which, given his history with Digiom, as we've noted, <laughs> isn't very surprising. He made a video on the of Cragmore in which he actually praised the company for taking a slight step forward, and then went straight back to slamming them against the pavement when they burst their load onto green light. The video for the latter subject was uploaded on March 16th, and on that fateful day, the Ramin brothers completely lost it. Yep, they actually filed a lawsuit against Mr. Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, boy. Yeah. It's come to that now. The whole world learned of this event by the next day, and essentially the Rumi brothers, specifically James Rumi because he's listed as the plaintiff, wanted $10 million from Mr. Sterling for what they perceived as false accusations of stealing artwork. Stealing assets, doxing, illegally using another company's name, and so on and so forth. 
As hinted at in the past, the case was to be held in Arizona, where the was located. And they added that they'd also be suing anonymous internet users for mocking comments, clarifying they see such users as overseas competition. Also something of note, there have been documents for this case created two weeks before the suit came into light. Now, I'm no legal expertise, so I'm not 100% sure of what this means, but it seems to indicate they've been planning to sue Mr. Sterling regardless of any future content he made involving them. And as if they didn't already look like the dumbest people in the world, they had to e-beg for funds in order to actually get a lawyer. Oh god, I'm getting Derek Savage flashbacks. I don't want to get Derek Savage flashbacks. So this is going to be the first of many statements regarding my thoughts about the controversy, but they all revolve around this simple, unquestionable sentence. This is fucking stupid. Regardless of your personal views for Mr. Sterling, and let me emphasize, REGARDLESS, this kind of thing is, as he would say, NOT ON. You can disagree or hell even shit on a critic if you don't like what they say all you want. So be careful when you choose to do so because that in and of itself can backfire tremendously. But going to the lengths of suing said critic puts you in a situation you can never turn back on. You're essentially betting on your whole livelihood here. Like if Mo or Team Martin or Pro Syndicate were to bet their whole channels away on CSGO or something. And honestly I bet they would if it came to that point. The claims in the lawsuit are also insultingly vapid. Sure there was one thing about Galactic Hitman's artwork which was corrected. But that's far from necessary in order to pull that kind of lawsuit off. And as for the anonymous commenters, well, that'll come back up eventually, I, I promise. But now we've reached a point where we split into two separate paths for this video. The games front, and the lawsuit front. And we'll be switching back and forth till the very end. Starting on the lawsuit path, a month passed since it had been filed. And I guess they thought 10 million wasn't enough because they decided to up it to 15 million instead. Ah, great, now I'm getting Silicon Nice flashbacks. However, most likely because they still didn't have a lawyer and virtually no legal expertise, they filed the amended complaint without getting the permission to do so first, or as they would call, a motion. As such, the judge in the case struck down the complaint. Eventually, Mr. Ramin fixed that, but by then, Mr. Sterling and his lawyers, two lawyers specifically, had filed a motion to dismiss the case on the grounds that Arizona doesn't have jurisdiction over said case. As Mr. Sterling has no presence in it, makes no sales in it, and isn't aware of anyone who watches videos in that state. And then, Mr. Ramin reacted to that by filing a motion to dismiss the dismissal. And in doing so, offered some counterpoints to the above. And, okay, bear with me here. He bought a t-shirt from Mr. Sterling and had it shipped to Arizona. And supported his Patreon from Arizona, apparently, as well. To try to prove Mr. Sterling did do business in Arizona. And then he invoked the Jesse Ventura vs. Chris Kyle defamation case as precedent for defamation cases like this, where the defendant isn't in the same state as the trial, or something along those lines. And then he said this. I'm not going to read it because it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life and I'm not going to force myself to do so. Moving on. Back on the games front, the Ramin brothers must have thought that, now that Mr. Sterling can't cover their games because of the lawsuit, they can do whatever the hell they want. So they went and put up a fuck shit ton of games on Greenlight, eventually totaling up to 49 games. 49 games! A little more than 48, not quite 50 though, which is the interesting part. 49! But that's not the worst of it, because with a lot of these games, the Ramin Bros must have took the wide derp approach to them, because there are sequels upon sequels with this shit. Sometimes totaling up to five. Two was bad enough, but now we have five games in a series that doesn't exist yet. This is like if Toys for Japan started making video games. No, fuck that. Digital Homicide are the Toys of Japan of video games. I, I just can't... I, uh, no. 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 Steal me. What is my purpose in life? Why do I continue to cover these cretins? I wish I didn't have to. I wish I could just sit here and listen to this sweet ass electronic music. Feels nice. Feels real nice. But I have a job to do. Besides, if I listen to this any longer, I'm gonna get copyright striked. However, Valve finally, thankfully, started doing something about this shit. 
and made a lot of these games incompatible with Steam. Kind of. It seemed like it kind of went back and forth on which games were compatible and which games were incompatible, and apparently it was only due to some bug, and so... I, I, I don't know. It's confusing, but whatever. It stalled their activity on Steam for a bit, so that's a good thing. And then switching back to the lawsuit front, July was not a good month for Mr. Ramin. Firstly, he wanted to motion to amend his response to Mr. Sterling and his lawyer's motion to dismissal. But he was denied that motion on the grounds that the response listed did nothing but repeat previous arguments, and now had to amend his response once again. And when that was filed, well, it just goes to show how much Mr. Ramin really needed a lawyer. But who knows, let's see how that crowdfunding attempt was going in order to get one. Oh. And also, a lot of their games were kicked off Steam in August, so... Yeah, this is a bad situation. Now, before we go into full derp mode, yes, we haven't reached full derp mode, surprisingly, I may as well address that there are some people in favor of Mr. Ramin. Most of them consisted of Mr. Sterling opposers, but there were some who had arguments that were competent. This article in particular stated that Mr. Sterling should have simply ignored Digihom's activity and that he took it too far, which resulted in the lawsuit. You can read it yourself in the description if you want, but considering that the article and website has since been shut down, apparently, and that I discovered the article from Mr. James Ramin himself in the comments of the original Digital Homicide video I did, oh yeah, that happened by the way, I don't think the argument holds much water. And besides that, not much more. Even fucking Kotaku and Action thought this was a shit situation, and they fucking loathe Mr. Sterling. Glad I can find some common ground with them. They're still a shithole, but we agree on one thing, and that's what really matters in the end. Now we go to the beginning of autumn, where Mr. Big Dummy Ramin did a big dumbo and dumbed up the dumb lawsuit to even dumber and dummy dumb dum 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 proportions. Remember how I said they'd be suing anonymous users in addition to Mr. Sterling? Well, they followed through on that and filed another lawsuit against 100 Steam users, demanding 18 million in the process, and subpoenaed for these users' information. That is a pretty big number, 100, and considering the variety of people on Steam, there's potential to get some interesting folks. So to a surprise, one of these Steam users was this guy. And no, this isn't photoshopped. This is on the official document, which is available to the public. So basically, Mr. Amin, unironically, gave this to the judge and said specifically, Yeah, I want to sue this guy. Nothing against the user or their preferences, but still, he used this image in an official court document. Kind of sums up the situation pretty well. Moving on. So with this crap boiling up, Valve did the only thing that was necessary in such a situation. They fucking canned the company. All of Digihom's games were removed from Steam a few days after the lawsuit was announced. Every last one of them. And then the two Bozo Brozos responded to that and implied they would be suing Valve as well for this injustice. All of this culminating two weeks later when they finally got some fucking sense and dropped the lawsuit against the Steam users. Noting, their business had been destroyed. And good thing too, at this rate they probably would have just kept going. I mean, after suing Valve, pretty much anything would have gone for them. They probably would have sued the judge that ruled against them, they'll sue Mr. Sterling's lawyers too, then they'll sue the people who do the articles on their demise, as well as anyone who comments on said articles, and then they'll sue everyone on YouTube who covers their shit, and then YouTube themselves, and then Google, and then Alphabet Inc, and then the whole fucking internet, until they finally complete the circle of suing, and end up suing themselves. And out of everything, that's probably the only one they would win. It took seven long, arduous months. But the Ramin brothers managed to completely destroy everything. Their business, their already dead reputation, probably their own lives as well, which is actually kind of unfortunate. Who knows what kind of shit they're going through in their personal lives now, and how this affects their families. Assuming they weren't lying about that shit too. Now the only thing to worry about is the lawsuit that started it all. The one against Mr. Sterling. Well, for a good three months, we didn't hear a lick about that either, until, finally, and thankfully before this video got made, whew, good timing, 
There was some news about that. Last week, the judge in the case of Mr. Ramin versus Mr. Sterling ruled in the favor of Mr. Sterling. And looking at the reasoning for that, it seemed the Ramin brothers crippled themselves from the get-go. The defense focused mostly on whether or not Mr. Ramin was the correct entity for the case. Mr. Ramin had been trying to claim that Mr. Sterling damaged digital homicide, but, well, Mr. Ramin isn't digital homicide. This entire time, he and only he was the sole plaintiff for the case, and not digital homicide, going as far to correct any articles that said otherwise. You notice how I never said digital homicide was suing Mr. Sterling? Well, there you go. So now what happens, you might be wondering? Well, the lawsuit hasn't been completely dismissed. Mr. Ramin has until February 10th to file yet another amendment to the case, but this time, it has to be filed by a lawyer. And Mr. Ramin has been representing himself this whole time without the use of a lawyer. Mainly because, well, he can't afford one. Which is now especially true since his business has been effectively terminated. Or so it seemed. While Digital Homicide's games may not be on Steam anymore, they're still around. But not in the way you might think. They still have a profile on the site and have been promoting their own site quite vigorously. However, it seems that they're done making games now and are just doing a fuck ton of giveaways. 15 new giveaways added today, over 1 million new free Steam keys. Giveaways, 1 million Steam keys available. 25 plus giveaways equals 1 million plus free keys. Tons of giveaways, giveaways, 1 million Steam keys available. Giveaways, 1 million Steam keys available. New giveaways, no Tufts Revenge Mega Giveaway. 24 giveaways running now. Decimation of RRR, the giveaway. Giveaway running now, Lux Rack. Devil's Chair Mega Giveaway now open. New giveaway, new giveaway, new giveaway. 16 giveaways running now. Giveaway running now, giveaway. Actually, hold on, it seems like they're selling their games on different sites now. I think. I'm not sure. If, whatever. They're also doing more shit under a new name, Loot Toot Games, which they use to seemingly promote a bunch of new, really uninteresting games, not made by them, on their personal website, Good Steam, boy. YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. So, I'm not 100% sure what the hell they're doing, but... At least their games are not on Steam anymore. To be honest though, I doubt that's gonna last for very long. They've shown in the past just how willing they are to simply make up a new studio head and sell games under that. Hell, there are probably a shitload of games on Steam right now that are by Digital Homicide and we don't even know it. They're fucking scumbags, the Ramin brothers. Utterly reprehensible, dickheaded scumbags. And sooner or later, their little world is going to completely crumble around them. As if it already hasn't. This fucking lawsuit is getting dropped, son, and there ain't shit you can do about it. And that's it, folks. Everything Digital Homicide has been up to for the past year, covered in this lengthy video. To summarize my thoughts, this was a mess. A stinking massive mess that never, ever should have happened and wasn't beneficial to either side. I just can't help but feel that all Digihom wanted in this situation was the attention. They've been covered by practically every games media outlet for their stupid bullshit and have been talked about endlessly on any YouTube channel that wanted that bit of attention as well. And I know I'm one of them, but again, bear with me here, bear with me here. And you know what, despite everything I've said and the fact that Digihom are pretty much dead, I can't sit well with this in my head so I'll never discuss these creatures instead. Uh, wait, what the hell was that? Unless this lawsuit goes through somehow, again I highly doubt it, or either of the Ramin brothers fucking kill a man, I am never mentioning Digital Homicide ever again in any of my videos. By now, attention is all they have, and I don't want to give them any further attention, thank you very much. I've covered what's necessary, and now I'm moving on. Uh, but before that, the takeaway of this video should be obvious by now, but I want to reiterate what I said at the end of the last video. Do not ever do what Digihom has done. Do not make a shitty game and then a bunch of carbon copies of said game and sell them because you'll look like an ass. Do not respond to criticism of your games, regardless of whether they're shitty or not, by throwing a huge tantrum about it in whatever way possible because you'll look like an ass. And for fucking Christ's whole sake, do not ever fucking sue the people who are rightly shitting upon you because you will look like the world's biggest ass and you will fucking perish into the ninth level of oblivion.
where Silicon Knights lays, and eventually Toys for Japan and Derek Savage as well. Basically, what I'm saying is, don't be digital homicide.